Well, yesterday was the one year anniversary of the Pulse nightclub massacre in which Islamic radical Omar Mateen murdered 49 people at a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida. Well, to commemorate the shooting, a vigil was held in New York City outside the Stonewall in sight of a 60s gay rights demonstration. But instead of just remembering the victim, the vigil became an anti-gun rally. Journalist Chadwick Moore was there at the vigil, and he joins us now to tell us what happened next. So, Chadwick, this was supposed to be a vigil for the people who died, almost 50 who died in that massacre, but it became something else? That's right. I think most people showed up. Uh, you know, the Stonewall is sort of gay. It's a gay holy site, right? It's, uh, it's, it's the equivalent of Mecca for Muslims. It's where everyone goes when there's a large event that, uh, that has affected the community, whether that's tragic or celebratory. It's where people would have instinctively uh, shown up to commemorate the one-year anniversary. What happened was is the, the, this, this far-left anti-gun group uh, essentially got the permit, I'm assuming, to hold uh, a rally that day outside. Outside of uh, yesterday, outside of Stonewall, and it, it, they were the sponsors of this event. So people who are coming to mourn, who are coming to be together, uh, to reflect, uh, who want to give politics a break, instead we're being subjected to uh, this this sort of anti-gun propaganda, all of these signs, all of this uh, anti-Trumpism. So is that really the message of Omar Mateen's ISIS-inspired murder spree that guns are bad? Uh, I didn't, apparently, according to this group, there was no reference to uh, Islam that I heard whatsoever. Uh, you know, Trump was the bad guy in the room for some reason. As we all know, Trump came to Orlando immediately after the shooting. The president waited four or five days, President Obama. Uh, but the message, that was, the take home was, is that this was about guns and only guns. It was. I mean, I'm sorry to laugh, but I mean, ISIS has bragged about, I mean, first of all, they endorsed the killings at the nightclub, at Pulse nightclub in Orlando, uh, yeah. because a lot of people who were killed were gay, and they said, you know, we're glad that all these gay people died. And they've also bragged about murdering people for being gay in the territories that they hold. None of the people at this rally noted that? Well, this is the strange, you know, this is sort of the strange phenomenon that when you have uh, large, dense populations of leftists, whether that's uh, on the college campus or if that's uh, in the gay community, that the small group of the loudest, most mentally and emotionally unhinged push their way to the front, seize the microphone, and bully everyone into going along with them. You know, yesterday, I'm very, very political on social media. Uh, yesterday, because I was so personally affected by, by, I mean, emotionally affected by the tragedy, I said, I'm not posting anything political. Political today, you know, I'm going to post about remembering the victims. I'm going to post about celebrating their lives. But you know, attacking radical Islam can wait till Tuesday. This group couldn't wait two hours, and so they subjected everyone who showed up into their radical ideology. And you know, most gay people aren't political. Most gay people, are, you know, they care about pop music and going to the beach. But uh, they probably know what the Second Amendment is. And so they show up to be together, to celebrate the community, to mourn together, and instead they're just fed this anti-gun nonsense. Well, it's just weird, though. I mean, whatever you think of guns or wherever you are on gun control, here's this group that hates you, that wants to kill you for who you are and says so out loud, and yet organizations like this are madder at Chick-fil-A than they are at radical Islam. I just find it inexplicable. I don't understand why. Why wouldn't you be, I don't know, fighting back against a group that says it wants to kill you? It is, it, is, it is so mind-blowing. It makes no sense whatsoever. It is one of the great, bizarre paradoxes of the left, where they're bringing these people, these groups together that, that you're absolutely right, Muslim, extreme radical Muslims, ISIS want us dead. They're, they're, not, they're not fighting so they you know, don't have to bake our cake for our wedding. They want us dead. Their, uh, their philosophy preaches it. And, and the left is silent. Uh, the, you know, the, the media still won't call it terrorism. The Washington Post yesterday, the Washington Compost, as we call it, it. They uh, would not say Islam or they would not say terrorism in their, in their reporting on the one year anniversary at all. It was gun violence, even in the Washington Post. Boy, it's like they're so ideological that they subvert their own interests. They refuse to see what's in their own interests because it's somehow not allowed. It's, it, and, and people, especially I see gay people, and I know many other people on the left are waking up to this every day, and, and they're fleeing. They are fleeing the left in droves. And I think Islam, I think radical Islam is one of the huge reasons for that, especially for gay people. They see that this yeah. makes no sense, and now they know that the right, they don't wish us any harm, people on the right. Well, yeah, and you, you certainly see that in Europe. Um, I mean, that, that's absolutely a trend uh, in Europe. The nationalist parties have 
have big support um, from the gay community. Yeah. Tyler, thanks all for coming on tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Tucker. Thanks. Good